This is what no one tells you when you buy an old house in France. I had to learn the hard way. First of all, to give a little bit of context, I'm Ryan, I bought a house about six months ago here in rural France as a renovation project. Now, the first major issue that I encountered was grossly underestimating the amount of work involved when you buy an abandoned property that hasn't been lived in for a number of years. And well, my one, there was issues basically everywhere. Going back to before I even purchased the house though and I viewed it for the very first time, I only spent about 15 minutes in the house and that was my first huge mistake. I viewed it once and I didn't view it for long enough. <laughs> in fact, I did no uh, research or, or kind of deep dive investigatory, you know what I'm trying to say. I just saw it and it looked nice at surface value, seemed like a good deal and I thought, why not? In hindsight, going back, I would have viewed this property at least three times. And that's the bare minimum. I barely asked any questions uh, to the agent and uh, that's, that's not what you should do. So my first top tip would be to do your due diligence, uh, even go to the local Marie, that's the town hall, ask some questions. Uh, if you're planning on buying a place in the countryside, ask if there's any uh, ongoing projects or plans to build something near your property or land, uh, because yeah, it's important to know those sorts of things. Now my second mistake is also quite a major one, and that is having no, and I mean no budget whatsoever to do the property up. Because here's the thing, I spent all of my savings on actually buying the place. I didn't get a mortgage, I just went in, paid cash, as they say. Now the process of buying a house here in France is a lengthy one, even if you're a cash buyer. Now in my case, I wanted to move quick, buy the property, get the keys as soon as possible, but it still ended up taking over two months. Uh, there was a little bit of a hold up with regards to getting uh, someone to do the diagnostics of the building. That's uh, checking for things like asbestos, uh, lead paint, kind of going through the whole building and you get a, a report. And this is something that you have to get for, um, well, whenever you're selling a building, it's the law, you need to have that. And unfortunately, it was around August and uh, a lot of agents, agents, diagnostic people were on holiday and so there was about a three week delay to get the diagnostics done. If you want to buy a property in France, well what you'll do is sign a compromis de vente. It's essentially an agreement between the buyer and the seller that you're going to buy the house and that's usually when you give a deposit as well. Now in France the deposit can be anything, it's usually 10%. Uh, but it can be more, can be less, that's up to the buyer and the seller to agree on. In my case, for instance, the deposit was a measly 5%, which totaled 750 euros, because the asking price was 15 grand, and with fees, this place worked out to be just a smidgen shy of 19,000 euros. Now, once you sign the compromis de vente, or the act of sale, or whatever it's called in English, uh, you have a calling off period. You can get your deposit back if you change your mind within that calling off period. Uh, however, if you go past the calling off period and change your mind, well, your deposit is going to be uh, given to the sellers, which makes sense. And during this time, the town hall will be informed of the sale of the property and they have a chance to come in and stop the sale if they want to buy the property themselves. And this has happened in the past. I actually know uh, someone who this happened to, and this was many years ago, and it was very unfortunate because 
the, uh, the local town hall, the mairie, as they say in France, they actually came in and said, no, you can't sell this property to this person. You have to sell it to us because we want it. And they actually offered less money as well, which uh, was somewhat insulting, I would say. If you already have the seller lined up for a certain price, the town hall should not be allowed to come in and offer less money. I think that's a terrible thing, but I know it happened uh, to someone and it's uh, very sad. But what is shocking is that, again, they offered less money and wouldn't allow the sale to go through uh, with the other buyer. Absolutely diabolical. And so that is why it took almost three months from viewing this place for the first time to actually getting the keys in my hands, even though I'm a cash buyer. And that brings us to yet another mistake I made when uh, choosing to buy this place, and that is not having any idea what I'm actually doing or where to start. That's right, when I first bought the place, I felt completely overwhelmed and I didn't have any kind of support network or um, people lined up to uh, come and help. I mean, I didn't even have any money at the time. I spent my last penny on buying this place. But eventually, after coming a few times, the place started to feel like my own and I was getting on with the work slowly but surely. And that's where I finally did something right and got some external help. Now, Billy's been here a few times to give me advice and uh, offer a helping hand. And of course, the one and only Nick Moon, shameless plug to him, link in description for his YouTube channel, of course. Uh, he came and he has been helping me uh, along the way. You've probably watched the videos and uh, without him, I wouldn't be at this stage and I wouldn't have the confidence that I have today. So thanks a lot, Nick Moon. Now to answer the big question, do I actually regret my purchase? Well, absolutely not. This has been a fantastic uh, learning experience so far and of course it's not over yet. <laughs> Nowhere near in fact. But there are a few things that I would have uh, liked to have with the property. Uh, but then again, beggars can't be choosers. But I'm gonna tell you anyway what would be ideal. First of all, there's no private parking. Uh, of course, this is not the end of the world because I have uh, a public car park right in front of the property, which is always half empty and uh, we're in rural France, so it's perfectly safe to leave your car overnight and there's not gonna be any issues. Secondly is, of course, the lack of outdoor space. Uh, a lot of people mentioned it, Ryan, where's the garden? Is there a garden? No, there's no garden, no land with the house itself. All I bought is the house and that's it, nothing else came with it. Now for someone who would live here full time, of course that can be seen as a huge negative. However, this does make this property particularly attractive uh, for someone who's gonna use it part time as a holiday home perhaps, because if there's no garden, then there's no garden to maintain. So that is potentially a little plus depending on what you're gonna use the property for. But if you were to ask me, Ryan, what's your favorite thing about this house? Well, my answer's not gonna change. It's down in the basement, it's that tunnel. That's right, when I viewed this place and I went down into the basement, I saw that tunnel for the first time, I was flabbergasted because not many houses come with their own tunnel. So I'm very happy with that uh, quirk. Now I have seen a few comments stating that the condition of this house is simply too far gone and it should be knocked down. And to be honest, I understand your point and I can see where you're coming from. However, this house, it's got plenty of life still in it 
I think. And uh, the four walls themselves, the structure, the bones of the house, the roof, it's all in good condition. It's well built. It's not gonna come down anytime soon. Yes, the interior is <laughs> not the same story, of course. All of the joists are rotten. But once we've replaced the joists, the windows, and basically everything else inside, then it'll be like a brand new home. And again, the four walls are solid, the roof's okay, and that is the perfect foundation to build on. And not to mention the history itself. This house is hundreds of years old. To knock something like this down, unless it's already falling down or it's dangerous, of course, then I understand, but no, 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 absolutely not. I'd never, ever knock something down uh, if it can be saved. And this house, this house can be saved. So there you have it. Those were the mistakes that I made whilst buying this house. But you know what? I haven't had to pay too much of a price for my ignorance because yes, the whole inside has to be gutted and I had no idea. But you know what? Makes for interesting videos and uh, it makes for a very good learning experience. I'll definitely be more careful in the future when viewing properties, hopefully. Now I know this video is a little bit different from the usual ones. Well, I thought I'd try something new and also it is Sunday and of course, I don't wanna to make too much noise and upset the neighbors. So that's why I thought I'd experiment a little bit in this video, but don't worry, normal videos are resuming next week. There you have it, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one next week. Don't forget to subscribe. I never say it, but you should subscribe if you want to or not. It's a free country. It's up to you. See ya.